How does a Western from 1966 stick in your brain like the good, the bad, the ugly does? Well, there's many reasons, but there's one in particular that stands out, and that's the music. And to prove that, I'm gonna hike this mountain. So let's go. Turns out, I'm not as in shape as I thought I was. And pretty much, this whole thing is just a steep incline. Oh boy. The most interesting part about the good, the bad, the ugly is that this film is regarded as one of, if not the best Western ever made. This spaghetti Western by Sergio Leone is all about criminals, sadistic killers, and opportunists. That's what makes it tick. But most interestingly, it's set to the backdrop of the Civil War, which is interesting not just for the brother versus brother dynamic and the criminals versus the order of the new world, but for the opportunities it creates for our leads. Wow, I'm tired. One of the most important elements here, just like most films, is the characters. The good is naturally the charismatic lead, Clint Eastwood, but he's not all good. I'll keep the money and you can have the rope. You filthy double-crossing bastard of all the stinking dirty tricks. Way back to town is only 70 miles. He's selfish, greedy, and an opportunist, including running a scam on small towns. He is also someone that sees humanity. In one of the most spectacular explosions in film history, he gives peace to a northern soldier on his deathbed. He does so again, comforting a dying southern soldier. He doesn't see the colors people wear, he just sees people for who they are, which is why he doesn't trust the ugly, and also explains why he dumps him in such brutal fashion. He knows the ugly would do the same to him or worse if given the chance, which is exactly what the ugly does. The ugly is a pure opportunist, an unpredictable, loose cannon making every scene he's in tense. He's evil, vile, and immensely selfish. He's more interested in having fun as he deems it, or getting rich. He's the perfect counter to the good on their wacky road trip through the West. The bad, though, is more concerning to our leads, because he is just a man of pure action. He wants what he wants, and he gets what he wants by any means necessary, and this makes him the most terrifying character in the movie. I remember this hike being bad, but man, this is like straight up. You can kind of see some brutal shit. Well, the story is pretty simple. There's a couple of really great sequences right at the start. One in particular involving the bad, where he finds out about a cache of money. $200,000 is a lot of money now, but back then $200,000 is millions. After a little bit of meandering, our good and ugly characters find out about that pot too. But what makes it interesting is that all three of them only have certain pieces of information that lead them to it. So they all kind of have to work together to find it, which creates a pretty fun and interesting dynamic between these characters. You're all alone, huh? Like me, Blondie. We're all alone in the world. Uh, I have you, you have me. But how does music fit in here? If we have memorable characters, settings, and thematics, isn't that enough? No. It's an incredibly thin line to walk, though, because you can get to a point where music can feel manipulative, where a scene isn't living up to the drama of a music cue. If one is off balance, then the scene can feel cheesy or manipulative again. But this film straddles that line perfectly. The entire film, aside from an aimless opening 30 to 40 minutes, sees the characters overcoming unpredictable obstacle after over-the-top obstacle on their way to achieving their goal. You can do a lot with cutting and shot composition, but you wouldn't be able to reach the heights the film does without its music. But in order to get my point across, let's illustrate a couple of scenes and break them down. When I'm paid. I always see the job through. Lack of music is also something that can hugely affect the audience. There's no music here because, well, what would be the point? If I was to fall down this hill after struggling just to get here, the audience wouldn't need a huge, dramatic, sad music swell to know that this is a bad moment for me. We've seen the struggle. We know the pain of getting back to where we were. No music necessary. This moment is the same. We know that this is a bad dude, and we know that just by him talking. A large portion of the film till now is dominated by the great Ennio Morricone score, but now it's just gone, and it's almost more noticeable. Or this moment near the end when they actually reach the cemetery stands out. They've finally done what they set out to do. They've made it to their destination. So how do you illustrate the euphoria the character must be thinking at this point? Well, 
like this. The Ecstasy of Gold, one of the greatest pieces of score set to accompany one of the greatest sequences put to film. What's so special about this isn't just the euphoric high you can get from it, but how beautifully Morricone weaves the themes and motifs throughout the rest of the film into this gigantic, triumphant piece of music. Well, you're probably thinking, but this isn't the end though, so why play this triumphant music now? To explain this, let's look at this hike I'm taking. Naturally, the hardest part of any hike is actually starting it. The next hardest is keeping yourself going in the middle when it's too far to go back but too far to see the top. You really have to push yourself telling yourself it will all be worth it at the end when you get that view. But what's more energizing? The view or the last leg of the hike when you see how close you are? There it is! I can see it! It's the top right there! Or at least not the top but where we're going. The G! It's there! Oh! Finally, I'd say the moment right before the summit is more important than the summit. Naturally, you'll want to pay off this moment with the actual view, and this film does that perfectly too. The standoff is the climax, and the payoff is them getting the money, but the standoff is the most important part because it is the climax to the characters, and we really need to nail that. But at this point, we have no idea who will live through this and who will die. We may have our ideas, but truly, if this film is anything, it's unpredictable. So who really knows. The film perfectly captures this by not only cutting the scene faster and faster as it holds the tension longer and longer, but then you get this swelling music on top, and it's a pitch-perfect moment of unbelievable tension. <laughs> music is the heart and soul of a film. An intense action scene might feel bland without it, or with the wrong music, or a rousing emotional scene of us finally getting to the mountaintop might feel underwhelming. Well, that was a literal pain in my ass, so I would appreciate it if you liked, comment what I should review next, and subscribe so you don't miss next week's film, Seven Samurai. We'll be breaking it down next week. Stay tuned for that. God.